Greetings. My name is David Pereira. This is a disclaimer where I want to clarify that neither I nor my company can be held responsible in case someone decides to use the knowledge provided for criminal purposes or with the objectives of committing cybercrime. Our aim is to disseminate knowledge in a manner that is both free, enjoyable, and highly entertaining. The purpose of this channel is to show people how a cyber criminal could attack them, what techniques he would use, what tools he would employ, how it all works, and what the modus operandi is. What we seek is to improve the levels of cybersecurity for everyone, and in no case, the opposite. Thank you very much. As always, it is a huge pleasure to greet you. I have noticed on many occasions that the videos I do, one of the common comments is, that too bad, this is very advanced. Too bad, I do not have the necessary knowledge to understand everything. And that really makes me very sad. So, I want to try to correct that, and I will try to explain some things a little more basic, or at least start from the beginning in some topics. We were with the topic of the pen testing in web environments. I'm going to make a video, this one, where I'm going to explain some basic concepts about pen testing in web environments. Today we're going to start with fingerprinting. Fingerprinting is basically the fingerprinting of a system. And for that, we are going to do several things. Today we're going to do three main things. Then in the next video, we will continue with others. First thing we are going to do today, brute force subdomains. It's very important that we can know which are the subdomains of a certain domain. For that, you're going to use different tools. I'm going to show you some of them. We are going to begin using. First, let's search with Firefox. We are going to look for a tool that is called Sublister. A very interesting tool. Look at it. Sublister. Sublister is a tool that allows me to do a very fast enumeration of subdomains and do numbering in different ways. Look, it does searches in Baidu, in Yahoo, in Google, in Bing. It's very, very powerful to install the Sublister in your site. Very, very powerful. To install it, you just need to do a Git clone from the Sublister repository, as you can see, and then you can run it with Python 2, sorry, or with Python 3, right? So, you can even install it with pip, with the Python installer. For Linux, if you don't understand what pip is, give it a Google search. You'll understand pip very easily. It's like an automated installer. But today we're going to clone it. And that's it. So look, we are going to put a sudo here to be able to execute this command as if we were a superior user. In this case, root. We are going to give the password and we clone the sublister. Now we can go to the sublister. Right? Let's see. There is the Python of the sublister. Then we are going to tell it Python 3. I do not remember if I have the Python 3 here installed. Most probably yes. Sublister.py. Then look. There it tells us that it works. But we do not know what to do. Then we are simply going to tell it minus H. So that it brings us the help in the sublister. All we would have to do is tell it, look at the domain minus D, the domain. Let's try certified hacker com, which is the domain we're going to test today, which is legal. Let's say we do this test. You can brute force if you want. Look, so you can pick a port, the verbosity. Let's tell it minus V to be verbose. How many threads are we going to handle? We're going to handle multiple threads. We're going to tell it minus T. 10, 10 threads, so it's very fast. The engines, we can choose different engines. Look, you can tell it, and, and the different engines we can use. But since we don't know, I'll show you what we do. Let's try it this way, and see what happens. Look, it starts testing in different ways. Look, by default, it searched Baidu, Yahoo, Ask. And look, it's trying to determine even virus total. Look how interesting. But, is virus total is blocking right now requests. Look, it's already working. We found 37 subdomains. Look, certified hacker, the auto config, the auto discover, the blog, etc. This would be one of the first steps we have to execute when we are going to do a test in an external environment, right? When someone tells us, look, my company is ABC, com, then one of the first things we have to do 
is this. I can show you another tool. I really like this one basically because it uses many environments to do it. But there are many more, many more tools that can do it. There are even, for example, Nmap script that can do it. Look, Nmap has a script. I had to write the tools so I would not forget any. Nmap, then you can say minus minus script. And Nmap has a script called DNS root. Remember, if you need to know what the Nmap scripts are, you can go to cd slash user share Nmap scripts. And then we can give it an ls command and a grep, a search grep for DNS. Then look, there's DNS blacklist, DNS brute, etc. The one we would be interested in would be a DNS brute force script. Then look, we would simply tell it Nmap minus DNS brute brute. Well, I don't need the dot NSE and we're going to tell it certified hacker.com, for example. Then Nmap starts a brute force look and found news blog certified hacker FTTP. Obviously, we did better with the previous tool. Look, everything it found is much more powerful. But let's remember that it is important that we can contrast at least two or three tools because you see that not all deliver the same result. Sublister was much more powerful because it looked in more places, in more sources of information. Now we already did brute force or subdomain detection. The next point I wanted to show you is directory enumeration. There are several tools that can be used. I used several, for example, in the challenges that I have within the channel. But today, we are going to use the classic one called Darbuster. What is the Darbuster? The Darbuster is a tool that allows me to detect the directories within a website. So we know, for example, that www.certifiedhacker.com exists, right? That domain exists. Then, we are going to try to enumerate what are the subdirectories that are within that web page to try to determine what would be the parameters to follow within our penetration test. Then, we simply go to the Darbuster, and we are going to give it the target. In this case, it would be http colon slash slash www.certifiedhacker.com. Remember that this page is from EC Council. Then, well, we can use automatic method both hit and get. What does this mean? How are we going to communicate with the page? I mean, are we going to try to bring us all the information, or are we also going to send it something to see the response? That's what this refers to. If you want to study methods at the HTTP level, there you're going to find all this information. Number of threads, we're going to use 10 threads, okay? We are going to use brute force based on a list. Then you can search inside the lists that are in the Kali, some of them. Then we're going to go inside user share, word lists, we are going to say word lists, word lists, and we can search. Look, there are two folders of Darbuster. We are going to search inside Darbuster. Let's put, for example, the list of directories. Small, for example, that one. Already, you can choose a bigger one, only that I do not want to take too much video time. Done. Now we are going to say to it that it does brute force of directories. That is recursive means that it looks for subdirectories inside that does brute force of files, that begins with slash is fine, and that the extension that's going to look for is PHP. And you have to look for the correct extension if it is an ASPX page. If it is a page where the files end in PHP, or they end in HTML, or they end in ASPX, etc. For the time being, we're going to leave PHP as the extension of the files that are inside the web page. You can look for it inside the URL of the page, right? Can you look at the source code? This is another thing you can do to try to find the correct extension. You can try different extensions if you're not sure. Then try HTML or try PHP. I would say from experience, try PHP first. Done. Now all we need to do is tell it to start. Then look at what this tool does. It starts to try all the subdirectories based on the dictionary that we provided it then. 
it starts looking for within the dictionary, for example, look at news, image blog, and look here, it gives us a 200 response, means that if it has been finding those folders or subdirectories, look here, we are looking at the results. Here, you have the information of the scan has done 80. Well, it is doing 72 repetitions per minute. So far, the results, 22 directories, 24 directories, 57 files. You see? Then, one of the interesting things that you can find with this same tool, go to the results tree. And here, we already see a little more refined what it found. Then look at found a folder news inside the www. Certified hacker. Com. Found a folder of images. Look, then we can see the icons. You have a slideshow. You have a gallery here. You see? So you can even open in the browser any of these URLs. I say right-click, opening browser, and look. Here. It just didn't let me open it because of a server error. Not a server protection, probably. That's not a problem. But it detected it. The tool detected it. Already, in other videos, we will explain more. In detail. Then after this, what we are going to do. But initially, we have to do the enumeration. What we are doing. Look here is a folder of documents. And look, there are some PDF. Technological innovation, etc. Then I can open it in the browser to see what we find. And look, it allows us to open it. To see what the file is about. Then you will find things that can be very useful for you within your penetration test. Within the ethical hacking exercise. See, you're going to find things. Here, well look, XML files. Look, there is a configuration file that we can open in the browser. So look, we already have things related to configuration. Would it be necessary to try to understand a little of what it is about? But well, we already did in directory numbering. There you see how it is giving us the result. You see, it is already finished because we did, we used a short dictionary, a short list of words that were searched inside the folder. Done. Last thing we are going to see today how to determine what technologies a website has, that is very important too. We are going to use a tool called what? Web. It is an extremely simple script, but very powerful. Look at what web can do. I just tell it what web and what is the site I want to search. I can even give you a list by means of a file. I can give it an IP, etc. So what do I do? I'm going to tell it www.certifiedhacker.com. Let's see what the tool does. What it should do is it should detect us. Look what we wanted. Look at it. Here it is. Detected us, the technology or the different technologies inside the server. It tells us, look, the country where it is located is the U.S. It is an Nginx version, 119.10. The IP address uses jQuery version 1.4. Meta author parallelis. Password field. Well, it has password fields. The title of the page. Certified hacker. Some out of the ordinary headers. So look, it already listed the technology that is behind this web page. Then today we found three super important data. Subdomains belonging to the same page or the same domain. Then we detect folders and files contained within that website and we detect its technology. All this is part of what is called fingerprinting. I hope you found it interesting. And well, we are going to continue later with basic topic like this so that you can start, let's say, from the beginning to find information and then go to things a little more advanced. I hope you found it interesting. Take care of yourselves. Stay healthy. Be well.